As I trudged through the dense forest, the eerie silence enveloped me like a suffocating blanket. The only sounds were the occasional snapping of twigs beneath my feet and the rustling of leaves in the gentle breeze. I had been walking for hours, the sun slowly descending towards the horizon, casting shadows across the forest floor. The once vibrant greens of the foliage now took on a muted, almost sinister tone as the light faded. I reached for my phone, hoping to check my location and find my way back to the trail, but my heart sank as I realized the battery was dead. The screen remained black, mocking me with its emptiness. I silently cursed myself for not charging it before embarking on this impromptu hike, a decision I now deeply regretted. The trees seemed to close in around me, their gnarled branches reaching out like twisted fingers, as if trying to grasp me in their wooden embrace. I pushed forward, the air growing colder and a sense of unease creeping up my spine, settling in the pit of my stomach. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or something, was watching me from the shadows. My pace quickened, my heart pounding in my chest as I scanned the surroundings for any sign of life, but the forest remained still and unnervingly quiet. Suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted a figure standing motionless among the trees. I froze, my breath caught in my throat, as if an invisible hand had reached out and grabbed me. The figure was tall and slender, almost unnaturally so, and seemed to blend seamlessly into the shadows as if it were a part of the forest itself. I blinked, trying to focus on the shape, but it remained unclear, shifting and changing before my very eyes like a mirage in the desert. I took a cautious step forward, my legs trembling beneath me, straining to get a better look at the enigmatic figure. But as quickly as it had appeared, it vanished, melting back into the darkness from whence it came. I rubbed my eyes, wondering if my mind was playing tricks on me, a cruel jape born of exhaustion and fear. The forest seemed to grow darker, the shadows deepening with every passing minute, as if the very essence of light was being slowly drained from the world. I decided to keep moving, my steps heavy and labored, hoping to find a way out of the woods before night fell completely. The unsettling presence of the figure lingered in my thoughts like a persistent itch at the back of my mind. I found myself glancing over my shoulder every few steps, expecting to see it again, watching me from the periphery of my vision. As I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being followed, stalked by an unseen predator. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end, and a cold sweat began to form on my brow, beating and trickling down my face. I listened intently, straining my ears to detect any sound that might indicate someone was nearby, but the forest remained eerily silent, as if holding its breath in anticipation. The light continued to fade, the once golden hues of the setting sun now replaced by a cold, bluish-gray twilight. The temperature dropped, as if the very warmth was being leached from my body. I hugged my arms around myself, rubbing my hands together in a vain attempt to generate some heat, wishing I had brought a warmer jacket. The trees seemed to whisper and moan, their branches swaying in an unseen breeze, like skeletal fingers reaching out to pluck at my clothes. Just as I was about to give up hope of ever finding my way out, I spotted a faint light in the distance, a tiny pinprick of illumination in the vast darkness. My heart leapt with relief, and I quickened my pace, my feet moving of their own accord, eager to reach what I hoped was salvation. As I drew closer, however, the light began to flicker and dim as if it were being swallowed by the darkness, a candle flame sputtering in the wind. I hesitated, a sense of dread washing over me like a cold wave, sending goosebumps racing across my skin. Something about the light felt wrong, unnatural, as if it were a siren's call luring me to my doom. I glanced behind me, weighing my options, the vastness of the forest stretching out in all directions, offering no solace or refuge. But the thought of being lost in the woods overnight, at the mercy of whatever lurked in the shadows, propelled me forward, my fear of the unknown outweighing my instincts. As I approached the source of the light, I realized it was emanating from a small, decrepit cabin nestled among the trees, its weathered wood gray and rotting, as if it had been abandoned for decades. 
The windows were dark, gaping holes that seemed to stare out at me like soulless eyes, and the door hung slightly ajar, as if inviting me inside, beckoning me to enter its musty embrace. I stood there, my heart racing, as I tried to decide what to do next, my mind reeling with possibilities, each more terrifying than the last. A twig snapped behind me, the sound as loud as a gunshot in the oppressive silence. I whirled around, my eyes wide with fear, my breath coming in short, ragged gasps. There, standing just a few feet away, was the figure I had seen earlier, its form more solid and defined than before. It was closer now, close enough that I could see the distorted, inhuman features of its face. The skin stretched taut over angular bones, the eyes glowing a dull, sickly yellow, like the eyes of a predator in the night. Its mouth twisted into a grotesque smile, revealing sharp, jagged teeth that gleamed in the fading light. I wanted to run, to flee this terrifying creature and never look back, but my legs wouldn't cooperate, as if they were rooted to the ground. The figure took a step towards me, its movements jerky and unnatural, like a marionette controlled by an unseen puppeteer. I stumbled backward, my mind reeling with terror, my heart pounding so hard I thought it might burst from my chest. As the figure drew closer, I could feel the air around me growing colder, as if the very life was being drained from the forest, sucked into the void of its presence. I closed my eyes, bracing myself for the inevitable, my body trembling uncontrollably. But then, a sudden gust of wind tore through the trees, the force of it nearly knocking me off my feet. I opened my eyes, blinking in surprise, to find that the figure had vanished, as if it had never been there at all. I stood there, trembling, trying to make sense of what had just happened, my mind spinning with questions and doubts. The light from the cabin had vanished, leaving me in complete darkness. The only illumination, the faint glow of the stars above, cold and distant. I knew I had to keep moving, to find a way out of this nightmare. But the fear of the unknown kept me rooted in place, my limbs heavy and unresponsive. And then, from the depths of the shadows, I heard it. A low growl that sent shivers down my spine, the sound of it echoing through the trees like a death knell. I knew I was not alone in these woods. The darkness pressed in around me, suffocating and oppressive, as if it were a living thing, hungry for my soul. I knew I had to move, to run, to put as much distance between myself and the unseen predator as possible. I forced my legs to move, stumbling forward through the undergrowth, my breath coming in ragged gasps. Branches clawed at my face and arms, leaving scratches that stung and bled, but I barely felt them, my mind consumed by the primal need to escape. I ran blindly, not knowing where I was going, only that I had to keep moving, to stay ahead of the thing that pursued me. But no matter how fast I ran, the growls seemed to follow, growing louder and more insistent with every passing second. I could feel the hot breath of the creature on the back of my neck, could hear the thud of its footsteps as it closed in on me. My lungs burned, my muscles screamed in protest, but still I ran, driven by a terror that eclipsed all other sensations. Suddenly, I burst into a small clearing, the moonlight filtering down through the canopy overhead. For a moment, I felt a flicker of hope, thinking that perhaps I had outrun my pursuer. But then, from the shadows at the edge of the clearing, I saw a pair of glowing yellow eyes staring at me with a hunger that made my blood run cold. I backed away, my heart pounding in my chest, as the creature emerged from the darkness, its form still cloaked in shadow. It was larger than I had imagined its body muscular and powerful, with long, sharp claws that glinted in the moonlight. Its eyes never left mine, holding me in a hypnotic gaze that seemed to paralyze me. I tried to run, to tear my eyes away from the creature's stare, but my body wouldn't obey. I stood there, trembling, as the creature slowly stalked towards me, its movements fluid and graceful, like a predator closing in on its prey. I could hear its low, rumbling growl, could feel the heat of its breath on my face. And then, just as I thought all was lost, a strange thing happened. The creature stopped, its head cocked to one side, 
as if listening to something I couldn't hear. Its eyes narrowed, and for a moment, I thought I saw a flicker of confusion cross its face. That moment of hesitation was all I needed. I broke free from the creature's gaze and ran, my feet pounding against the forest floor, my heart racing in my chest. I didn't look back, didn't dare to see if the creature was following. I just ran, as fast and as far as I could, until my lungs felt like they were about to burst. Finally, when I could run no more, I collapsed to the ground, my chest heaving, my body shaking with exhaustion and fear. I lay there, listening for any sign of pursuit. But the forest was silent, save for the sound of my own ragged breathing. I didn't know how long I lay there, too afraid to move, too exhausted to think. But eventually, I forced myself to my feet, my legs trembling beneath me. I looked around, trying to get my bearings, but everything looked the same, an endless expanse of trees and shadows. And then, in the distance, I saw a flicker of light, a tiny pinprick of illumination in the darkness. My heart leapt with hope, and I stumbled towards it, my feet moving of their own accord. As I drew closer, I realized it was a campfire, the flames dancing and crackling in the night. But as I approached the fire, I saw something that made my blood run cold. There, sitting around the flames, were a group of figures, their faces obscured by the shadows. They looked up as I approached, their eyes glinting in the firelight, and I knew, with a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, that I had stumbled into something far more terrifying than the creature that had pursued me through the woods. For these figures were not human, not entirely. Their features were distorted, twisted, like something out of a nightmare. And as I looked closer, I realized that they were wearing the skins of animals, the fur and feathers still clinging to their bodies, as if they had just emerged from some primordial hunt. One of the figures stood up, his movements jerky and unnatural. I stood frozen, my heart pounding in my chest as the figure approached me, his eyes gleaming with a hunger that sent shivers down my spine. The other figures around the fire watched, their expressions a mix of anticipation and excitement, as if they were waiting for some twisted show to begin. The figure reached out, his hand gnarled and covered in scars, and grabbed my arm, his grip like iron. I tried to pull away, but his strength was inhuman, and I found myself being dragged towards the fire, towards the waiting group of nightmarish beings. And then, just as I was about to be pulled into their midst, I heard a voice, distant and echoing, as if it were coming from a great distance. Wake up, it said, the words cutting through the terror that gripped me. Wake up. Now. Suddenly, I found myself bolting upright, my heart racing, my body covered in a cold sweat. I blinked, my eyes adjusting to the dim light of the room, and realized that I was no longer in the forest, no longer surrounded by the nightmarish figures. I was in a psychiatrist's office, lying on a couch, with the concerned face of my therapist looking down at me. Are you all right? She asked, her voice gentle and soothing. You were under hypnosis and it seemed like you were having a terrible nightmare. I nodded, my mind reeling as I tried to make sense of what had just happened. It had all seemed so real, the forest, the creature, the figures around the fire. But now, in the safe confines of the office, it all seemed like a distant memory, a terrifying dream that was already fading. I'm okay, I said, my voice shaky. It was just a nightmare, I guess. But it felt so real. The therapist nodded, her expression sympathetic. Hypnosis can sometimes bring up buried fears and traumas, she said. But it's important to remember that they are just that, fears and traumas. They can't hurt you, not really. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my racing heart. She was right, of course. It had all been in my head, a product of my own troubled mind. I had been seeking help for my anxiety and depression, and the hypnosis was supposed to be a way to uncover the root of my problems. I stood up, feeling shaky, but relieved. Thank you, I said to the therapist, managing a weak smile. 
I think I'm going to be okay now. She returned my smile, but there was something unsettling about it. A glint in her eyes that I hadn't noticed before. Of course, she said, her voice taking on a strange, almost mocking tone. You're going to be just fine. As I turned to leave the office, I heard the door lock behind me with a soft click. I spun around, my heart leaping into my throat, and saw the therapist standing there, her face twisted into a grotesque smile. You didn't really think you could escape me, did you?